My name is Jenity Page Eggleston. I'm a 35-year-old wife, a mother to four kids, living in Pleasant Grove, Utah, and I'm a professional oil painter, also known as the Art Ninja. <laughs> We were living with my parents, and they had a pool and a pond. And the day we moved in, my mom was like, oh, I'm so nervous about the pool. And I was like, mom, it's fine. You have a fence, we have alarms on the doors, we have all these safety precautions in place. And then on that day, that morning, uh, just kind of a perfect storm happened, and my son fell in the pool. Welcome to the Julie Jepson podcast. Um, I'm here with Jenity Page, and she is a native of where? The Western United States. So all over the Western <laughs> US. Yes, I'm here in her studio. Messaged her on uh, Instagram and was just like, oh my gosh, I've got to. I just wanted to talk to her and be her friend because she has got an amazing story of grit, of of trial and um, tribulation, and then just overcoming heartache. So let's just jump right into it because I, I don't even know where to start with your story. She is an amazing artist. She's also like a ninja warrior. Were you on the show? I've competed on four seasons. So you were on it. But they've never aired my run. They haven't? <laughs> what the heck? Why not? Well, I And were they really successful know. runs? Yes. I all have, four? Well, not all of them, no. no but um, that's a good question. I think I did have a casting producer tell me once that like, they were waiting for me to get a buzzer mm. because they wanted to preserve my story. Like that happens a lot where it's like they, they're trying to create a moment. Of course. Yeah. And like, if they could have me look like it, I'm like the first time on the show and mm. I've been through this hard thing and then I get a buzzer, then it creates like a magical moment. Mm. Right. So they, they, they hold things back until. So we the, might be watching a four year old. Yeah. Right, yeah. Well, so like, for example, um, my friend Sandy Zimmerman was like the first mother to ever hit a buzzer on the show. And that was in 2019. And I was there. I saw her actually like get the buzzer. And um, they they played on the show like it's her first time, but she's, she, it was actually like her third season. Okay. So, you know, it's Hollywood. Well, so, but, <laughs> but you've hit the buzzer, haven't you? I've never hit oh, the buzzer. Oh, you haven't hit the buzzer. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's like, if you hit the buzzer, then like, you, are, you are guaranteed. Like they have to show you, yes. right? Um, and so I, and, and honestly, like this past season was probably my most like disappointing ever mm. because I was so ready for that moment. Cause I thought, man, like I literally came in with like no athletic experience. Um, if like, what did I do growing up? Um, in fifth grade, I was on a competitive jump rope team. I was, I, no, was, you I, well, I wasn't on the team, but I won first place for the jump rope competition at school. Okay, it still well, rains. I still. Have I was strong. like on a team that like traveled and did like, you know, assemblies for elementary yeah, schools yeah. and stuff. But then we moved at the end of my sixth grade year, and so that cut that off. And then I did a season of track in ninth grade, mm -hmm. really because of uh, of a crush, because yeah. just because yeah. the boy was on the team. <laughs> um. And then I did half of the season of cross country my uh, sophomore year, mm. and I quit halfway through the season because I would literally be ill. Like, Didn't I would try. push myself so um. hard, and we're just running 5Ks, you know, but mm. I'd push myself so hard that by the end of the race, I wanted to barf. Yeah. So I just walked up to my coach, and I was like, this isn't fun. No. So, um, so, so that was my athletic, like, I never played any sports or anything. Um, and then I, I, I enjoyed running, so I called my I called myself like a casual runner, like yeah. a hobbyist runner, like a casual drinker. <laughs> just every now and then, but with running, I would just like run for fun. Yeah, like through college, through pregnancies, but I never did races. I was huh. literally just running for fun. Um, and then we moved here to Utah in 2015, and our home was like a half a mile from our rec center. Oh, nice. And so I told my husband, like, "Hey, we should like." we should work out sometime. Like there's a gym, like, right. That we could walk to it. So I started taking fitness classes and that's where I started to build like the foundation of my strength. But you know, again, like I've had four kids, yeah. I'm just a mom, I'm lifting like, or, you know, you start out lifting like eight pounds, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and then you, you move up 10, you're like, Oh yeah. Like we're really I'm making progress yeah. here. <laughs> I taught, I taught, um, Oh, what are they called? Fitness classes for 15 oh, you years. Did? Yeah. 
I taught lift, spinning, step. Step is my true love. Oh, that's yeah. awesome. So yeah. what did you take? Just all of them? Um, it was mainly like a like a boot camp yeah. style class. Yeah. Um, I did I did high fitness for a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um, but anyways, that's, and then after my, um, I'd say maybe like 2012, I started running competitively. Oh, so, um, I did tons of half marathons here in Utah. Um, and, but that, that was, that was it. Like that was my athletic experience. So mostly cardio. Mostly cardio. Yeah. And with some weight training with my boot camp classes. Yeah. Yes, sprinkled in. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then it was in the fall of 2000. 18 that my little brother asked me to go climbing with him um, at a local gym here mm -hmm. and it was bouldering so you don't have a, a rope you just climb like 13 foot walls and then if you fall you just fall on a crash okay. pad and I had never bouldered before but I've never even heard of it like that was that I should take you, you. Should totally take no it's me. so Is fun that scary I mean I know you're gonna fall but can you still get hurt I mean well, of course you can get hurt yeah. you can get hurt doing anything but totally I mean I've never broken anything I mean i I have my, my legs, I always say, look, I'm a, I'm a fifth grader, you know, like I have bruises, bruises yeah. <laughs> but that's about Skin it. Yeah. And stuff. Um, anyways, but when he took me to the climbing gym, I loved it because these, these routes are called problems mm. and, and they're, and they're rated problems. So you have like easy problems and then you have super hard problems. It's just like a and metaphor for life. Going it is in there. such, yes. <laughs> so and cool. so you can choose your problem. And <laughs> a lot of times the problems, like they say in climbing, you actually, it's funny because they call the sport climbing, but you actually fall like 70% of the time. Yeah. So you, you try a route and you fall and you try a route and you fall. Yeah. And then it's, I love it because it's like mentally and physically stimulating because uh -huh. it's almost like solving a puzzle. Right. You're like strategizing. You're, yeah. Like yeah. figure out which hand goes where, which foot, what placement. Anyways. Um, and that I love when you get to the top, like you've fallen so many times, like yeah. this is so perfect for gritty women, right? Yes. You get to the top and you're like, yes, I just solved so my many. problem today. Yeah. And, it, and it doesn't matter that it was an easy one because it was hard for you at the beginning and you solved it. Right. And then progressively you can move up to harder mm -hmm. problems. Mm -hmm. Um, so my first time in the climbing gym, I was like, yes, I love this. I love, I love the grit and I love feeling like I accomplished something. Today. And you did not have the same upper body strength then that you do now. Oh no. I mean, because I, she is ripped. I, She's got You can't delts. tell no, behind no, these tank top. fluffy <laughs> sleeves. <laughs> but um, I, I, I have actually like before pictures. Mm -hmm. I have a before picture right, where, you, oh, where I'm flexing and, and little... I'm like, oh, sweetheart, is there a bicep there? <laughs> just a I can't guy. really tell. Yeah. <laughs> um, anyways, but the, the climbing was like my, you call it my gateway drug was mm -hmm. climbing. Mm -hmm. And then I was literally like um, three months into my climbing experience. Uh, yeah, like after my brother took me that one time, I got a membership in shoes and started taking myself, you know, three three days a week. Yeah. And I loved it because I didn't have to have a belayer. Like in yeah, most yeah. climbing, you have to have a partner. Yeah. But you could just like the ombre. You can just the, yeah. You can just yeah. solo all the time. And so I'd put in my earpods and I just go solve problems at the gym. And That's I'm like amazing. so I'm I'm literally honest, I'm taking you with me one day. Oh, I would okay. love to do. <laughs> Is it the same? I mean, you can go and just memorize them, or do they change the the handles? Oh yeah, saying? so they call that like a reset. Like they reset the routes like oh, every do. couple months. Okay. So eventually, like if you if you went to the gym in like August and you went back in like October, it'd be a totally different gym. Interesting. So that's and sometimes you're working on a problem and then they change it and you're like, I didn't send it yet. Yeah, yeah shoot. <laughs> Anyways, oh, yeah. so I'm three months into this and I'm at the gym one day and I have a feeling. And the feeling says, You should apply for American Ninja Warrior. <laughs> and like I had watched the show. Yeah. Like my husband, I actually really liked it. And you want to do the show. And this I don't. It just comes to you. This yeah. thought comes. Yes. And I think that's ridiculous. There's no way I'm doing, no. Like I had watched it with my husband. We love the stories. We love watching these like incredible feats. Like humans never cease to amaze me, but there was no way that I could ever do that. Right. Yeah. So I just kind of like brushed it off. Like that was weird. But then I go climbing and the thought just kept recurring. And it's funny because people sometimes say, Oh, Jenna D, like you hear God's voice so clearly. Like, I think you have a gift for it. And I was like, well, it it's actually not that hard because most of the time, the things that he tells me to do, I don't want to do. Mm. And and so when you fill that argument with yourself, you're like, well, I'm not, I'm not, 
Obviously, this isn't coming from me yeah. because I don't want to, I'm resisting it, That's right? Yeah. And so I feel like we all have experiences like that where it's like, hey, you really should go talk to your neighbor or you should really forgive your mom or you should, you know what I mean? Like there's mm-hmm. all these kind of ideas that we get that we resist. Like, no, I don't want to, no, Mm -hmm. that's hard. No, Mm -hmm. that'll be uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And then if they're persistent, right? Like, I feel like God is so persistent and, and he gives us multiple chances. Chances over and over and over again. Yeah. So he tells me the first time you should apply. And I was like, no, (laughs) that was weird. And then it came coming back and it kept coming back. And so finally one day I'm literally in my car driving home and I can't stop thinking about it and I keep Mm -hmm. finding it. And this is like, I think a lot of moms out there will resonate with me when I say like a lot of times inspiration comes in the car because you're by yourself. Mm -hmm. It's like one of the few times in your day that you're going to be by yourself and it's quiet. And um, so I'm literally, I'm stopped at a red light. This is going to sound like so wacko, but whatever. And I just said out loud, like, God, I keep feeling that you want me to do this. Is this something that you really want me to do? And it was like, Yes. Like I just felt so strongly it was something he wanted me to do. And I was just like, why? <laughs> well, well, and we don't usually think that he would lead or guide us to do something like that. It's usually something spiritual. Right. Like, should I go on a mission or do I marry this man or do I do this for school? But like do a Hollywood or like a, you know, a show that will be, you know, shown in front of millions of people. Like that was inspiration, which is weird. That's weird. Yeah. Like you're, you're thinking, this is a prayer I never thought I would offer, you know, <laughs> but then I, and this is, this is a whole other story. I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll have to go forwards and then backwards, yeah. but I had spent my youth, um, in a daily devotional practice, um, where I really did train myself to hear God, to hear inspiration, to get answers to my problems. And, and that pattern, that, devotional practice had led me to have a relationship with him Mm -hmm. so that when he asked me to do hard things, I, I know that I can't say no because I know that something great will come. I know it'll be really hard, but I know that he doesn't ask me to do anything that he won't help me do. So I was like, well, he technically only asked me to apply. (laughs) So that was my consolation was like, I, I didn't have, there wasn't a ninja gym close to me at this point. So I went to like a, a, a kid's trampoline park, mm. you know, where mm-hmm. they have birthday parties mm-hmm. and they had like a ninja course ish thing set up. And, uh, I had been there with my kids before to play. And, and this course was actually pretty cool. Cause it's, it's pretty high off the ground and they just have these big airbags underneath you, yeah. which is similar to the show. Like when you can pee on the show, usually you're like 10, 12 feet in the air, you know, and there's just like a body of water under you. Yeah. Um, and I had been there with my kids and they'd have like a rolling log, you know, and, and I would like step on it as it, and, and you just, and you're, you're like, that's not going to happen. <laughs> and then you watch other kids do it and they fall, you yeah. know? And then they had, um, a, the last obstacle at this little course was called the devil steps. Mm-hmm. This is a, this is obstacle that's been on the, the TV show, but it essentially looks like inverted stairs. Like you go up like this and then there'd be like a four foot gap. And so you'd have to like somehow like transfer over here and then you come down on the side. You have to just jump? Yeah. Or can you just like move one hand? No, it's too far to reach it. So I had been there with my kids and I had literally attempted that before. And I had gotten to the top, which I was proud of myself that I even like made up the stairs. But then like I looked over my shoulder at the gap and I was like, what? (laughs) Like how how am I going to get there? Yeah. So I go to film. And uh, I, I I hired this this you guy. You saying you go to film to send it in? Yes, okay, a submission video. Okay. Yeah, you have to make a submission video. So I go to, to do it, and the guy that I hired to make my video was like, "Okay, we're gonna do the quintuple steps, and we're gonna do the rolling log, and we're gonna do the jumping spider, and we're gonna do the double steps, and we're gonna do it all in one take. Go." And I was thinking, I've never done this before. Oh my but gosh. Okay. <laughs> Why not? Let's go. <laughs> so I go to the starting line, and all of a sudden, I have another feeling. And this time it's my son because my son is deceased, right? I feel the spirit of my son and he says, let's do this, mom. And then all of a sudden, like all that fear, all the hesitation. I mean, it's really usually fear and hesitation that stops us from doing anything, right? But it was like that was just lifted and I just went. 
And I got to that, that spot at the top of the devil steps that I always stopped before. And I didn't, I just went and I, I, you made it. And I did it. And I came down and I looked at my husband and I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> and it was all in one take. It was all in one take. I did oh it. And I was like, I didn't even know I could do that. And he's like, I didn't know you could do that either. <laughs> I was like, maybe I can be a ninja. Like, I don't even know. So that was like, that was the submission. submission okay. He's like, this is the, my easiest job. It was yeah. one take. He's probably there for 10 minutes. Yeah. So once I submitted, um, I told my husband like, maybe I should take ninja classes somewhere. Because it. And you've already submitted, like, you're, you've already applied. I've already applied. Yeah, because yeah, you apply in, like, December, and then you hear nothing for, like, three months. Like, you just put yeah. in your submission and yeah. don't call us, we'll call you. Yes. But I thought, like, man, if I hadn't taken any ninja classes, I mean, I don't think they're going to call me. But they called me to be on the show, and I literally had no mm -hmm. experience. I will look like a fool up there. So maybe I should take classes. Mm. So I found a gym in Salt Lake, which was about like an hour drive from my house on a Monday night at five o'clock. It was the worst oh to like gosh. drive through all this traffic. Yeah. And um, I go and they're like, oh, are you here to sign up your kids? And I was like, actually, <laughs> I'm here to sign up your classes. <laughs> and so they put me in like their adult class, which really means like, you know, teenage boys, yes. like college mm -hmm. kids. And, and one of the first skills you have to learn is called a lache. And it's where you're swinging on like a stain, you're swinging on like a steel bar. And then there's like a six foot gap and you have to throw yourself six feet and catch the other bar. Hmm. And I remember just swinging on that bar and like I'm five, seven. So there's like five inches between my toes and the bar. And I just remember being, wait, what? Mm -hmm. Like, is it physically possible for me? Like I'm swinging on this bar and like somehow I'm going to like fly six feet and catch this. What? Mm -hmm. Like it just seemed... It seems so impossible. Totally. Yeah. So you try and you throw and you fall and you fall and you fall and you fall. And then I threw so – my little teenage coach that I had, you know, he's like, you got to throw the bar behind you. And I was like, son, you realize that bar is stationary? You know? <laughs> son. <laughs> Gosh. So, but then I did. I followed his instructions and I tried to, like, throw the bar behind me and I got enough force. And this time I actually hit the bar – like I made the six foot gap, but this time my wrist just slammed Slanted. right into the bar and I didn't grab it and I fell and I was like, oh my gosh, oh, like it hurts so, so bad. bad. That makes like, my broken wrist Yes, ache. yours. <laughs> like that area is just so sensitive. Yes. I slammed this bar into it, but then, but I, cleared but it. I hit it. Yeah. And I was like, you it is it. possible. So I did it again, slammed my wrist in. I was like, oh, like the second time you're just like, and I look at my little teenage coach and I was like, dude, I keep slamming my wrist into the bar. And he was like, you should really stop doing that. And I was like, <laughs> I know. Anyways, I finally caught it. Yeah. And, and it's just like in climbing, right? You yeah. made it to the top of the route and you feel like a champion. You're like, oh my gosh, let's go. I caught this bar. Yeah. So, um, I, but, but I remember getting the car to drive home and my hands and my wrists hurt so bad. Mm. I could hardly hold the steering wheel. I'm thinking, I am an artist. Seriously. Lord, this is dumb. Yeah. Like yeah. I literally said that. Like, I need, this is how I earn a living. Like, mm -hmm. I can't be doing this. If you really, if this is something you really want me to do, like, I'm going to need more support next week. <laughs> so I show up the next, you know, I just, and I would be driving to Salt Lake with like fear and trepidation. Like I'd literally be sweating like down to my rib cage. Oh, were you sore then the next day? Oh yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, but you have a whole week. I like, I was like so scared to go back. Right. Just like the humiliation. Totally. Um, the intimidation and then just the full on, like I could literally injure myself. Right. Yeah. yeah. But then each week I kept getting like one more obstacle than I did the week before. And it was so amazing. Cause you realize that I think, I feel like it's so easy for us to set up these barriers of what's possible. Mm -hmm. Like, no, mm -hmm. I can't do that. Mm -hmm. Like, and, and those barriers of what I thought was possible just every week just kept getting blown, you know? So was, did you feel empowered? Every yeah. Every single week, you're just like, oh my gosh, dominated that onto the next step, like, like solving problems left and right. That's right. <laughs> like your possibility just keeps expanding. Yeah. And it's hard and it hurts and you don't necessarily get the obstacle that you want every week, right? It might take a month sometimes. I mean, I literally just, just this past week, I was at the Ninja Gym and I did something I've been trying to do for 18 months. Mm. So it's kind of like as you progress, right? Like yeah. the amount of time you have to put in to send a different obstacle becomes greater. But 
Did you did you do it? Yes, you did it. I freaking I did it, and I was like so excited about it. <laughs> Anyways, so um, so I started taking lessons in January, and then in March I get a call from a casting producer that they want me to come on the show. Then I just looked at my husband and I was like, "Dude, crap, just got real, man." Like I, it's an exciting phone call. No, I have to go compete. Like I have to do this for real yeah, on a TV people, show, national TV. and it's not like you get to practice. Yeah, like. I was gonna say because when you go to these ninja gyms, then are they are they similar to the actual course? So I'll say there's like core technique, right? Mm. There's like core moves, mm -hmm. like that obstacle is something like we have to learn how to throw your body. Mm. You, there, you're gonna throw your body down the whole course, yeah. but in all different various ways, you know. So, and they try to like, I mean, they want to kind of stump the athletes, right? Mm. So they they bring challenging, techniquey, yeah. harder little things like every year. So, and, and yeah, you show up and first of all, like it's at the Tacoma Dome when I competed as a Tacoma Dome and, um, they put you in this ninja holding area and you're there and you're hearing people talk about how like, yeah, like I'm in the NFL or yeah, cool. Like I competed for team USA in gymnastics and this Olympics and I'm an elite Spartan racer. And you're like, oh my gosh, I'm a mom. And I paint. Like literally my only qualification for being here is. I've been climbing for six months. <laughs> I've ran a 5K. Oh, no, I had run half marathons. I've run half marathons. Like, yeah. I'm totally qualified yeah. to be here. Like, totally. you just feel so out of place, inferior. Yes. Yeah. It was so terrifying. And I literally felt like David and Goliath. Like, yeah. I felt like I was going in with my little sling, and here's Goliath. And they, they walk you down the course, and they have someone demonstrate the obstacles. Mm. And they don't the demonstrators don't necessarily always complete it right yeah. i literally watched a girl like fly like she got this obstacle she flew into the mat and like sprained her ankle oh and like they had to call the medics and then the producer's like next obstacle and oh you're just like my god oh my god <laughs> and you got no practice rounds no no oh, wow it's cold like you just wow. you just get up there and it's go time and the cameras are on and it's literally like the scariest thing i've ever chosen to do in my life <laughs> yeah and my first season, uh, you know, they had the quin they had the shrinking steps. So you just, you run up these little blocks that get further apart and smaller that are cross water. Mm -hmm. You grab a rope, you swing. And, you know, I made it through some crazy obstacles. Like this is just one obstacle um, that imagine like two giant toilet paper rolls suspended from a rig. Okay. Like that kind of shape. Mm -hmm. And they have like handles at the bottom of them. Mm -hmm. One of, uh, on the one on the right, the handles up here and the other ones, the handles down here. So you like lache to that handle and then they have these little bars so you can do like some little pull-ups to get on top. Then you're literally standing on top and there's this handle right here, okay? And you have to like jump backwards and that handle's going to go underneath the toilet paper roll. Oh my god! And then you fly and launch and you hit a mat. That's the one where I told you the girl like busted her ankle doing it. <laughs> She's like, no. Oh. So you're, you're up there. You've never done this before and you're just like, I really hope this goes well. Oh my and gosh. then it's talk about a leap of faith. Like you literally just j jump backwards. Like you have to fly your legs out that way, take the momentum underneath the swing and then just let go. And I landed on the mat. And I was like, <gasps> I really, oh my God. I bet. You're like stunt. Now, now I can have an appreciation for when you watch the show while they're like, yeah, I was like, I made it. Oh my gosh. And then the fourth obstacle was some, um, they called it broken bridge, but it's like these panels that are suspended by chains and you have to like run across the panels. Yeah. And I was like halfway through that and I fell in the water. Oh. So, but there's only, there's only like four uh, or sorry, five obstacles and the warp wall. So yeah. as like a rookie, I was Is like, the wall you climb? The, it's the, the what wall? they call it the warped wall. Hmm. It's like a 14 and a half foot wall. You run up yeah, and hit and a buzzer. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. So I was literally like one obstacle away oh, from running up the wall, but it was my first season. Right. Yeah. And I was thinking, oh my gosh, I did it. Like I did good enough, like as a rookie to make yeah, it that far is totally. incredible. And they'll share my story. And that's why God asked me to do this. And I can go back to being an artist. It's yeah. like, and it's funny because I, I literally talk about like feelings and thoughts. Like I literally had a thought that was like, Jenity, you're making a lot of assumptions about why I asked you to do this. Mm. And you're going to like, well, yeah, I am because I'm trying to figure out why the yeah. heck you sent me yeah. to compete on American Ninja Warrior. Yeah. 
So in my mind, I painted this picture of what it was going to look like. I'm going to go. I'm going to share this heart-wrenching story. I'm going to talk about how God put me all back together. Yeah. They're going to put it on national TV. You're going to inspire millions. I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll inspire millions. Yes. yes. And I'll go back to my Which studio. Which <laughs> And I'll just keep painting, <laughs> yeah. you know? Um, and, and it's so hard because you come back and everyone wants to, oh, when is your episode? Like, uh, I want to watch you on TV. Yeah. And you actually start to realize how much we, as a public, value television. Right. And it's kind of like disheartening a little yes. bit because you're like, man, we are really into it. Like, totally. Anyways, it's a whole other topic. But so then I'm waiting and I'm waiting. You're waiting for the producer to tell you, like, get the email, like, when is your episode? And I got a, I got an email and it was like, Janity, you did amazing for your rookie season, but you competed with too many celebrities and we don't have time for you on prime time. Oh my gosh. Do you think they would have shared it anyway? Like, re, like if the celebrities weren't on it, you never know. You never know. So it was like, so, I was like, so devastated. It was like, so crushing because you have to go and tell everybody, sorry, sorry, you can't watch me on TV. I know you're really excited to watch me on TV, but you'll have to catch me on Instagram, you know, yeah. like, yeah. Uh, and then, and then I go back to the drawing board. Like, why are we here? Like, w what's the next step? Like, and everything that I do, I'm always trying to, I feel like my life is really like a partnership with God. Mm. And so, you know, it's like, let's have like group meeting. Um, <laughs> this didn't go like I, planned and what's like what's the next step with american ninja warrior and i felt well jenny come on i mean you've been you've been training what like four months now mm -hmm. so what if you trained for a whole year and you're like oh my gosh you probably get stronger yeah <laughs> it'd be so hard oh my gosh but um i was like okay so i just kept showing up and we actually got a, a gym closer to my house so oh, that yeah, i didn't so have to drive around. So I just started training at that gym and anyways, I've now competed on four seasons and they still have not aired it. I was going to say, look at these hands. They're like <laughs> callous. Dude, and... like this finger, like oh, <laughs> this finger. Oh, has it been jammed so many times? It's been, well, it's only jammed twice, but it's, yeah, it's in bad shape. <laughs> but I will say <laughs> after, I mean, it's now been like five years that I've been yeah. training oh my gosh. and I've only broken my nose and torn my shoulder and jam my finger Only. which i feel like is yeah, like pretty this good pre yeah. I mean, because every time i'm in the gym i'm doing this crazy stuff that you literally could get like really yeah. hurt so yeah. and and that's another thing where i when i tell god i'm like hey well we're just riding this we're riding this ride and i and i don't know where it's going um but like i know that there's kind of like a i could get hurt I, yeah I, yeah so as long as you can let me do this then i guess we'll just keep doing it but this past season was the most disappointing because mm. Now it's been, this is my fourth season. I'm, I'm like a veteran of the show now. I'm like, I'm like the show mom mm -hmm. now. I'm like braiding all the little girl's hair and I'm, and I'm, <laughs> and I'm telling, and, and that's the other thing. Like most of my competitors are like as young as 15. Um, most of them are 15 to 22. You know, they're, they're children to me. Right. And I'm like grandma. Mm -hmm. So um, anyways, totally thought I was going to have this moment. Like. I brought my son's portrait that I painted and I, and I, his name is Victory Morgan. And, um, I wrote victory on my forearm, you know, and at the beginning I'm like, yeah, like, let's go. This is for victory. And we're going to get the victory at the end. And, um, the girl that had run the course before me, like this time, instead of those steps at the beginning, they yeah. changed it. And there was like a trampoline with, um, a pole. Mm -hmm. And as soon as you grab the pole, it started to fall. So you had to climb the pole before it hit the water. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Well, the lady that had gone before me, she fell in that obstacle. And I remember watching her walk with her towel and just being like, oh, nobody wants to go out on the first obstacle. Like, it's so it's embarrassing. The first yeah. Like, oh, that's so sad. So she goes, and then I get up there and I do this, you know, this is for victory. I kiss my husband, see my kids. My kids are all so excited and we're all vested. I run, I hit the trampoline, I grab the pole, and it's soaking wet. <gasps> They hadn't, like, because when you fall, right, it splashes, and they hadn't dried the pole. So I'm climbing it, and it's like, you feel like there's this train coming, and you can't stop it, right? Oh like, you gosh. know what the event, like, the inevitable is, and there's nothing you can yes, do about yeah. it. And all this preparation, all these years of training, and it's all going down, you know? <laughs> and you're just like, and I, you know, my, I've watched the video of it, and I, yeah, I literally just look like I'm going like this, and I, I, I 
Yeah, and there was no redo. No. Well, and this is the thing. Like on the show, they have something called obstacle malfunction. Yeah. And I've seen this before because sometimes obstacles break, like they're not perfect. And so usually if there's um, something wrong, they'll offer the athlete a redo. Yeah. So I go down and then five other people went down after me on the exact same obstacle before they were like, oh, I think there's something wrong. Cause and they had already gone. Right? Those yeah. athletes had already gone the five? They went right after me and they just, all of them went down on the first obstacle. Oh my God. Which was crazy because, you know, we're, we've been there for hours and everybody was clearing the first obstacle. Like, was it, it wasn't that hard, right? Like, they, they intentionally don't make the first obstacle because right. they want people to make yeah. a show, right? Yes. So, so we're all standing back there with our little American Ninja Warrior towels and we're like, they're going to have to call obstacle malfunction, like for sure. But what happened is they they had started filming late. They filmed in the middle of the night. This is two in the morning. Mm. Um, and they're supposed to start at eight. They didn't start till nine. And so they're an hour behind and they didn't have time to let us go. And so it was just like, sorry, mm. catch you next time. Oh my gosh. And I just remember like you put on this brave face for your kids because your kids are just like, mom. And I was like, I know, like, it wasn't fair. And I was like, I know, like sometimes life's not fair. Yeah. Um, but I'm not doing this for NBC and I'm not mm -hmm. doing this for personal glory. I'm literally here just because this is something that the Lord put in my path. And I came as physically and spiritually and emotionally prepared for this. And so I just have to be okay with what is. Yeah. It sucks though. Oh, it just sucks so bad. So I went to, we got back to my hotel room at like 6 a.m. You've been up, you know, 36 hours. I go, I remember like being like you walk in and you have this bag of wet clothes you know, from you falling in the water and you just like drop it. And I remember writing in my journal something like, well, I'm just really disappointed. And then I said a prayer and my prayer was just like, God, I don't even know what happened tonight, but I just, I'm so sad. And I guess I'll talk to you tomorrow. Mm. And I just like, I like went to sleep just thinking like, I'm going to go to bed and I'm going to wake up and I'm going to feel better yeah and I slept like three hours because oh. I'm a I'm an early riser it's hard for me to go to bed at like six so I woke up at nine and all of a sudden I wake up alone in the hotel room because they don't let you stay with your family <laughs> I wake up and I just remember it all like the whole thing right we've all had experiences like this where you've been through something really hard and you wake up and it's just like replay yes replay replay and I was just like Oh, like I it seems so dumb because it's a TV show, right? But it's just like when you have oh, these that's dreams. Five years of training under yeah. your belt. Yeah, and it just felt it felt it. like so unfair. Like yeah. if, if if I would have fallen because I wasn't prepared or because I wasn't strong enough, like it would have been easier to swallow. But the fact that it was just like taken from me, mm. like I just cried, mm. and I just I literally just it was so pathetic. Like a person all alone in a hotel room, in the sheets sobbing right and then i like i'm gonna take a shower because i'm gonna feel better and i remember just standing in the shower and i literally couldn't stop crying and i was like why is this so hard for me but it was it was it was like so devastating yeah. and then i got i got home um from la and all that this was at the back lot of universal studios it was like a big deal but i get home and you know a lot of people they like quit their jobs or like everything is vested in this tv show mm -hmm. they're like yeah like I seriously like people are yeah i had this job but i quit it and i'm living in my parents basement so i could train for american ninja warrior and you're like Jeez. cool yeah. and i was thinking i'm so glad i didn't put like yes. everything in the ninja basket i walk into my studio and i just feel like this is where i belong like this is my space yeah. this is my turf no it really is amazing because it's like you're making all these tiny little refinements with this tiny little brush over time and that's exactly like how God makes us. You know, it's not in big, grandiose movements with a huge brush. No, God works in these tiny little, <laughs> tiny little movements repeated over time that eventually lead to something truly great. And it's all this fine, you know, it's like in ninja and in arts, I was telling you this morning, like, I'm learning so much that it's just like, it's the tiny things repeated over time. It's, it's by small and simple things are great things brought to pass. Such a simple concept, but it's just like, you just learn it again, you know, and again.
and it's like you get like a general area and this is like this is like our growth too and and i just was so disappointed and frustrated and angry and i just i kind of said this prayer like why am i doing this and then the lord was like genity did you really think this was about a tv show mm. oh, sweet girl did you really wait did you really think i care about nbc yeah. and you're like well, I, I don't know i mean i guess i mean you were the one that asked me to do this incredibly hard thing and then i felt genity look at you look at look at the person that you've become you are a totally different person now than you were five years ago mm -hmm. genity i care way more about the development of an individual and I do about reality TV. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, okay, I guess you're right. Like, mm -hmm. I guess it's been okay. <laughs> but so it's funny how, like, I feel like sometimes the Lord puts us on these paths and we just, we can't see why. And we think that we think this is why, mm -hmm. you know, but what's so beautiful is that in, in the process of not only have I physically become like a different individual and mm -hmm. now I coach at the ninja gym mm -hmm. and now I'm inspiring like these 12 year old girls to do this hard stuff. And that's like, that's awesome. But also it's now like found its way into my art and I'm painting some of the athletes that I've met on the show and wow. sharing their stories. And so it's going in this, in actually a really beautiful path mm -hmm. and I'm excited to where it's going. And none of that would have been possible if I hadn't, done this ninja thing right, right. but sometimes it's just hard when you think yeah this is why and yeah. you imagine in your head like you see in your head like a million times you hitting the buzzer and crying like ugly crying at the top of the tower giving all the glory to god but you'll get that moment well the I thing is, is i'll still get it i mean i don't know yeah. the truth is is that i've kind of had to let go of that dream yeah because yeah. i don't know yeah. and and it's it, it causes too much sorrow to spend waste so much time and energy in a place you don't know if it can ever happen would it be amazing if it did absolutely mm -hmm. but i'm just trying to um go on the path that i yeah. feel like yeah. it's, and the it's purpose leading. is so much deeper yeah like now it makes you real like when god says do you think I, do you think i care about reality tv and you're like <laughs> well, oh man. yeah i mean i guess not <laughs> so, so oh my gosh so four seasons is that four years so it's actually five years because um, I went to go compete in 2020. So I've actually been invited to compete on the show five times. Mm. When I went in 2020, um, I like moved my kids in the car. This is like the end of like the beginning of March of 2020. Okay, before like before the COVID, like really yeah. all the crap at the fan. It, so I like blew my kids in the car and my mom's telling me, they're not gonna film the show. There's this crazy COVID thing going on. I was like, mom, it's Hollywood. Hollywood gets to do whatever they want. Yeah. And we drive there and they've got the whole course set up in the back lot of Universal Studios and my kids are so excited. And then the night before we go to compete, oh, no. California, shut like the government shut it all down. Oh. And the producers literally tried all day. Cause they're like, we already have it set up. Like, can we just film? And they're like, no. So I just had to like get in my car and like oh my gosh. drive right back home. That yeah. sucks too. Yeah. <laughs> in uh, 2011, I was mom to two little boys. Um, my oldest, Victory Morgan, um, and then my my son Benson True, and we were living with my parents because um, my husband had left his career to go to grad school, mm. and so that we could survive financially we moved in with my mom and she had like an acre and there was a pool on her land and she was so nervous and i was like we got all the we got all the safety stuff mm -hmm. we'll be fine mm -hmm. and it was fine for like yeah. a like a year and a half and then yeah just one day kind of like a perfect storm uh you know all these little all these little events happened to enable my son pass the gate and and pull him out of the pool and uh it's just I, I it's funny how it was 12 years ago but it's it was also like it's still so fresh like yeah. I feel like we go through these experiences sometimes that are just like so clear in our mind you know like I was feeding my toddler breakfast and and then next thing you know you're just thrown into this nightmare yeah. and I just remember being on the phone calling 911 and just being like why aren't they here yet and then like the paramedics and the CPR and then the cops and the cops sit you down and you're watching CPR happen out the window and you're just thinking like, this isn't my life. 
like, I, I've got to wake up because this isn't, this is too bad to actually be happening right now. <laughs> and then he was revived and he was life lighted. And uh, my husband and I had to get in our car and like drive to the hospital wondering if our son's going to be alive when we get there. And then, uh, yeah, we spent seven weeks in the hospital. Mm -hmm. And I remember going home to like shower <laughs> after like a couple weeks. And I drove past this pharmacy and I saw all these little girls in my neighborhood doing a bake sale for us. And I remember they, they all ran up to me and they're like, how is Morgan? So his name's Victory Morgan, but we called him by his middle name. And I was like, oh, you know what? He's going to be fine. Because mm. I told, like, he, he wasn't on life support or anything. I was say, was he on machines? Mm -mm. Wow. So they did have him intubated um, for the first two weeks because they were trying to let his lungs heal. So he was in a medically induced coma. But then they, they took him off of everything. Mm. Um, and I, I'll, like, never forget that day. Because I was totally talking about, like, things that you imagine, like how you think it's going to go down and then how it actually goes down sometimes. Mm -hmm. Like, in my head, I imagine them, like, taking him off the drugs so that he wakes up, taking the breathing tube out and have him be like, Mom, I fell in the pool. Mm. Like, that's what I thought was going to happen. So he was unconscious for seven weeks? No, no. He was unconscious for two weeks. Okay. Just because he was intubated. Okay. So instead, they pull out the tube, and they take him off the drugs, and immediately something called a sympathetic storm begins. Mm. So with near-drowning victims, like, the damage is here, right? Mm. So his basal ganglia is like the control center of your brain, and that was damaged. Mm. And what happens in sympathetic storming is, like, your sympathetic nervous system is like your fight-or-flight response, and it goes haywire. So it looks kind of like a seizure because in a sympathetic storm, like everything flexes. Mm. So all of his muscles would flex. And then his, his heart rate and his breathing would go super high. And they last, it would last like 20 minutes and then he'd just pass out in exhaustion. Oh, yeah. yeah. And I was like, what was that? And the doctors were like, yeah, sometimes in your drowning, there's these sympathetic storms. And I was like, what? Can that heal? Sometimes it can. Yeah, yeah, sometimes they say, oh, it's like his, his brain is like his nervous system is trying to reset. Mm. And, um, and so I just hoped that there would be light after the storm. And um, I talked about earlier that I did this daily devotional practice that, that led me in. And um, that's really what I held to while my son was in the hospital. Mm. I had my journal, I had my scriptures, and I would just, I would write and I would pray and I would read. And um, I love having like the journal in into the mix and not just like reading scriptures and praying because that's like the synthesis. That's like a, that's yeah. like where it all comes together. Yeah. You know, how old was he? He was three. Mm. And uh, so yeah, I just like I I I read every scripture story where Christ performed miracles. Mm. I brought all my faith to the table, and I knew exactly what God was capable of. And so I just waited, and I would wait as long as it needed to happen or a miracle. For your miracle, yeah. And instead, he, um, his, his storms grew to be 48 hours. Gosh. And it literally, like, his body just couldn't. Yeah. Yeah. And so he passed away, and uh, I just remember being, like, <laughs> I talk about being severely disappointed, right, when I was this past season of American Ninja Warrior, but... It, it was like next level, right? Mm -hmm. it, it felt like I'd been in this relationship with somebody for, you know, um, 25 years mm -hmm. and he broke that trust. And I, yes. it just hurt so bad, like on so many levels. Like not only did I hurt because my son wasn't there and like when your kid's in the hospital, like the thought of going home without him, like I didn't even want to go home and shower because that would mean he would not be with me and I would be going home. Mm -hmm. And I just remember being like, that can't happen. Like, there's no way I'm coming back unless he's with me. I remember the morning after he passed away, I got up and I wrote in my journal and I said a prayer. I put my shoes on, I went outside, and I ran. I cried. And I just remember, like, my tears just, like, flying as I'm running and, like, just all this grit inside me. And I watched the sun come up. 
And as I'm running, I just knew that I was going to keep going. And I really think that like that's the day I became a warrior. to like face that reality it's like that's terrible but then also like the spiritual relationship and the spiritual disappointment of like yeah. knowing that God can do all things like knowing it and, it's been there and then he didn't do it and I remember being like well God you, you tell me that I'm supposed to liken the scriptures to me but like where is my story mm -hmm. where is the woman that has all the faith in the world and she brings you her son and you you say sorry, not today. Like, mm. and then when I asked that question, God said, Genity, what about my son? Mm. Sometimes people have to die. And I'm so sorry. And and I and I remember being like, but I I had all the faith in the world and I brought all his faith to the table. And you felt almost like betrayed. Yeah. yeah. And then and then he says, Well, Genity, what takes more faith? Getting what you want. Or continuing on when you don't. Mm. You're like, well, obviously continuing on when you don't. But I had spent I had spent so long like developing that relationship and I was so invested in it mm. that like I didn't really have anywhere else to go. Yeah. And so even though I was disappointed, I just kept showing up every day with my journal with my scriptures, just like I showed up when I was really disappointed. <laughs> I'm like, I'm really disappointed. Say a prayer. Also still very disappointed. <laughs> also, by the way. And I know, and you know, that we both know that you know what you're capable of. Yeah. And but I, obviously this is part of something that I don't understand. Mm -hmm. And so you just have to have that humility to say like, I don't know. Mm -hmm. And you do. And you know me, and I know you've got me. So let's just trudge through this really difficult road together. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, there were times I, I, I'm a bit of advocate for people to tell God that they're mad at him. Yeah. I think he likes it. Mm -hmm. I tell people, I, mean, I go around and speak quite a bit, and I tell people, I say, if you've never been disappointed in God, if he's never hurt your feelings, if he's never let you down, you don't have a real relationship with him. Yeah. <laughs> because think of all the relationships we have, our parents, our best friends, our spouses, our kids. Yeah. Part of having like a true relationship is that it's not going to be perfect all the time. Right. And so I feel like God would prefer us to bring like our best self to the table, like our, our real self to the table than our best self. Like mm -hmm. I, I think he'd rather us just say, I'm really mad today. I'm going to tell you about it. Yeah. <laughs> and like I just like we would have a normal relationship with anyone. You yeah. Have a problem like, dude, this is not working for me. <laughs> yeah. And honestly, that's how my relationship with God even got started because, you know, when I was 10, my mom told me that I could have a relationship with him. And if I did these three things every day, mm -hmm. wrote and read scripture and prayed, and I believed her. And so I started and at first. It's really simple because you're 10. So you're writing about like I went, jumped on the trampoline today mm -hmm. and I had ramen for lunch and then mm -hmm. I'm getting school clothes and, you know, yeah. and then because your life is so shallow, it's like, you read the scriptures and it's like, well, let's pick, let's pick a good verse in Proverbs today. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Good. And then you say a prayer and it's like, I had such a great day today. Let's make tomorrow great too. Yes. You know, yes. <laughs> it's totally. a very, it's very superficial because yeah, you level. haven't experienced pain yet. Right. You know? So for me, like, it's like it, but the pattern. Right. So even if you're writing trite things and you're saying trite prayers and you're reading trite scriptures, 
It's fantastic. You're creating fantastic because eventually I tell people if you have not had a major problem yet, you will eventually. Seriously, stick around. Right. And so then as soon, I think I was like 14 when like my first real problem came and I had this friend that was like my best friend. And then she like ghosted me Mm. and I, and she wouldn't talk to me and I didn't know why. And it like hurt. And so all of a sudden, like I'm writing about, I have a problem and this girl, like, and it hurts. And then like, when you read the scriptures, it's, did Christ, was Christ ever hurt by his friends? Mm -hmm. And then, and then you, and then when you pray, you're like, well, how do I, what do I do? Do I mend, how do I mend this relationship? And, And you're seeking for answers. And so this pattern took some of my faith that was at once, you know, just kind of like very surface level. Yeah. And it like, you know, it becomes very applicable to your life. Right. And then all of a sudden I started finding answers to my problems. And it became like a record, like a personal record mm. that God knew me because I, I had like the written evidence wow. in my in my journal, yeah. you know? And so it was like when you're – when you're doing that every day, like you really do create like a relationship. Wow. And I, I, I recommend it to everyone because I feel like that's, I mean, you go to church and you learn like, you should read the scriptures. You should pray, you know, but I feel like until you learn how to like really internalize it and make it personal Mm -hmm. and then, and the writing, because that's where you, that's where you figure out what you need to pray about. Mm -hmm. Because well, and really, the scriptures are journal entries. That's right. Like, I, I know. Like, why are we not talking about journaling more? Because, like, we wouldn't even have the Bible if right. nobody wrote and, it down. Wilfred Woodruff wrote in his journal every day, and that's why we know half the things we know about the Prophet Joseph Smith. Like, and I only started recently journaling again with what I'm doing with because I want to be able to look back and remember and see how far I've come. Yeah. Has that what's kind of helped you? Like, you can look back at. Oh my gosh! Yes, I tell people all the time. You can time travel. Mm-hmm. I'll show you. <laughs> I love actual experiences. So that's so cool. Yeah, I have this little time travel um, shelf over here in my studio. <laughs> there it is. It's one of them. One of many, probably. Many of you probably have the same. Journal. I do. <laughs> I totally this do. This is like the 1995 Desert Book Edition. Yes. Okay. So, like, how cool is this? Like, I told my son. Like, but it's so sacred. Your kids will have this forever. You yeah. know what I mean? It'll just be passed down. Like, like the, it'll be Jenny, whoever your kids are. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, 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 can't, I can't find it because I'm not quite sure it is right now. But I, my son just had, like, his first dance in sixth grade. Like, they did a Valentine dance. And I told him, I was like, dude, you know what? You could go to my journal. You can read, read my actual experience in sixth grade at my first actual sixth grade dance. How cool <laughs> is that? So do you write every day? So that's another thing I will say. I was not super consistent. Like, look, here, here's like two weeks, two weeks, two weeks. But still consistent for years, maybe not every day. But That's still, right. Yeah. And I tell people that because I feel like sometimes there's this like self-doubt that's like, oh, well, you were going to be consistent and you missed a day yeah. and now you've missed two weeks. So then you just give up it looks altogether. like your journal time is over, mm-hmm. you know, like, why do we think like that? Yeah. I think it's because the adversary is trying to keep us from doing good things. Right? right. So he puts all these excuses in our mind, but really, yeah. Consistency is just showing up again. If it's been a minute, you show up again mm-hmm. and you show up again mm-hmm. and you show up again over. This is, this is the long game. Yeah. You know, this is a marathon here. So anyway, so I love that you can go back. These, these are my most sacred journals, and they're my ugliest ones. These are, this is the Tucson Medical Center free Aww. notepads that they give you. Oh, they were. Oh, my God. I was going to say, it doesn't look like a normal. So I have Morgan's Victory Part 1 and Part 2. Oh, my gosh. So that is seven weeks worth. hmm So was he ever um, cognitive? cognitive? Mm. No. Mm. And I, I think, I mean... I don't know. I think I'm going to get to the other side and realize that he was part here and part there mm, most of the time. Oh, for sure. But did, did he pass away during one of those storms? Um, well, actually, what happened is his body just broke. Oh. So it, everything just stopped working. So, I, I mean, yeah, it was after, like, the 48-hour storm that um, – 
did it did it make you think of like the atonement you know like like christ in gethsemane you know like the bleeding from every pore and feeling everything that he felt like his literal body could not handle it and gave out just just about every day mm -hmm. <sighs> especially because there's like a lot of nights like my husband would go home um to be with our toddler or he was in grad school <laughs> Gosh, my husband, he, he had a homework to do. Yeah. It was crazy. Um, it was victory you were first. Uh -huh. yeah. And so there were many nights that it was literally just me and him. Mm -hmm. And the storms come and go kind of like contractions. You know, like he'd have one for 20 minutes, then he'd pass out for a couple hours, and then you'd watch him start to wake up, and then he'd go right into a storm. And as his mom, like, all I could do was just, like, stand there and hold his hand and pray and oh my gosh i thought about guess how many i thought about the atonement of jesus christ like sure. all the time yeah um this is one of my most favorite pages so here's this little portrait this was three days before he passed away my little angel boy <laughs> you know and it's like it, I still was hoping, even when I drew this, like this wasn't going to be his last portrait, yeah, you know. That, but I do remember when I drew it, thinking he looked like an angel. He does. He looks so like he's just resting so peacefully. Was that after a storm? Yeah. Oh. So how cool is it though that when you keep a journal, when you have a record, that you can go back yeah. and you can read how you felt and what's so. What's so crazy is that like we change so much that I feel like when I go back and I read my old journals, it's like a different me. Mm -hmm. I actually do want to write a book one day where it's like a memoir, where it's a collaborative effort with the various versions of myself. Yeah. Um, but honestly, more than anything, I feel like the record, yeah, you can time travel, which is really cool, but it just shows God's hand in your life, like over and over and over. Like, and I think about in the scriptures, like one of the most important words is remember. Mm -hmm. And it's because we forget. We mm -hmm. think that we're gonna remember. But we don't. Mm -hmm. But but if you have a record, then then you can't forget. Yeah. And because it's a living thing. Like I'm I have this edition over there on the counter, just like writing it in this morning, you know. So it it like keeps it keeps your testimony, it keeps your faith in Christ like so present. Mm -hmm. Have you felt his his little spirit or big spirit? Since yeah, he's, he's yeah, he is big. He's, he's informed me of that. Yes, I feel him. In fact, I did. Let me get this. I like show and tell. <laughs> this is all her art right here. I guess this is good that your podcast has a video. Yes, if you're listening, <laughs> we're just we're grabbing some artwork here. Okay, uh, so. This painting is called Close But Separate. This is you. This is me. Mm -hmm. And this is my, my little son and rising up through the veil. And I painted it because I actually had a friend from high school who lost her son um, in 2015. So just a couple of years after me. And you just, there's this longing in your heart as a mother, you know, that you feel like you reach for him all the time. Mm. And the truth is, I do know that we live after we die because I have had many encounters with my son. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> but we're separate. Yeah. Like, I, I haven't seen him. I felt him. I haven't seen him. And so it's hard because you, you know that he's like right there. So close, but you're separate. And then I used this watch as a shackle because i realized it's just time like we're only separated by time yeah. oh in fact the time on the clock is 11 12 the day that he passed away november, november 12th oh, right there uh -huh. okay. november 12th so um anyways so yeah so i painted this because i do feel him a lot it but i'm i remember feeling like i remember feeling gravity mm. and feeling so like weighted here <laughs> Yeah, and, and he was lifted home, you know. And then what's interesting is that a couple of years after I painted that, I painted this one. So this is 
This, you know, have like the same the same chain and the watch. Mm -hmm. This painting is called His Strength is Mine because I realized that this chain, like this thing that used to hold me down, this grief, this yeah. mortality, yeah. had become like a, a catalyst for growth and for strength. What yeah. yeah. And I um, I included a couple scriptures in the back. Oh, awesome. One is from the Book of Alma and the Book of Mormon where it says that they could bear their burdens with ease. It talks about like there's this time where these people are in bondage mm -hmm. and instead of God freeing them, it says he just strengthens their shoulders that they could bear the burdens. And ask them to submit cheerfully. Yeah. And so like I felt that you know, up to this point, I'd had, tr I had trials that had come into my life and then they left, right? Like you, you, you have a, a struggle, you pray, and then eventually resolves. And then I was realizing that I was now being handed a trial that was never going to resolve in this life. Mm -hmm. And so I was going to have to bear this burden like the remainder of my life, mm -hmm. but knowing that God could strengthen me to bear it. And then I also include um, 2 Timothy where it says, God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And, and what's crazy is I, I painted this in, I want to say 2016-ish, like a year after I painted that one. That's before all your media stuff. This is two years. <laughs> That's crazy. You're kind of and like, you ripped there too. It was huh? like you were, yeah, you are. This was. Picture. I need to redo it because I'm actually, I'm actually, less, I thought I was strong and it was strong, yeah. but this was like, this was like boot camp at the, mm -hmm. at the rec center. This was my, my progress picture. <laughs> it's like your spirit, your soul knew, yeah. you know, and came out in paint form and then your mind came, you came up with that. Well, it's, you know? it's, and it's funny because, and this is one thing that I tell people is that like, you don't really know who you are. But God does. He's known you forever. Yeah, and our soul is so old. And so that's why I say, like, as you focus on building this relationship with God, like a personal, like, put him into your life. As you come to know him, he introduces you to who you really are. Mm. Because you don't really know. Yeah. Like, I was, an, I was an artist growing up. I know. Yeah, I wanted to get in that, too. What, when did this start? <laughs> well, so this is a series of events that led me to move my senior year of high school. And my parents gave me the option to stay or to move. Mm. And what did I do to make that decision? I wrote, yeah, okay. I prayed, and I wrote and I read my scriptures. So I did that same pattern. And through that pattern, I learned that despite what I wanted, because we were living here in Utah, and I was going to, I had a big school, and I had, I was, I had auditioned for the choir, and I was going to be in the band, all this stuff, you know. And I had to, like, let it all go. But he asked me to move with my family to Colorado. Mm. And all of a sudden, I find myself in this very small town in a very small school. I think I went from like a 5A school to like a 2A school. Dang. There was like 80 kids in my grade. In what grade? Your senior year. In my senior year. There's oh 80 kids. <laughs> I, like go to, I, was just, I was just teaching art in my kids' elementary school this morning. There's like 33 kids in their class. I'm like, yeah, this was like almost half of my, my senior class. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, anyways, like I, I, up to that point, I was a very academic girl. I was like so nerdy. You wouldn't believe it. I was so nerdy. I, I had classes and headgear and I like, I was like so nerdy. I just wanted like, I, I didn't have much of a social life. I just wanted to get good grades, all that. I didn't have headgear in high school. Just so you know. It was mainly just had to wear it at night, but still. There are incriminating pictures of me out there. Yes. So, um, so I just wanted a full ride to college. Like that was my focus all through like growing up. I just want, I want to be valedictorian. I want a full ride to college. So when I go to sign up for classes at this new school, I was like, give me AP honors, yeah. just line it all up. Yeah. And, and she was like, we actually don't do any of that here. <gasps> oh my god! I know, actual, actual artifact. <laughs> so... Were you mad at your, like, were you bitter at your parents? No, because it wasn't my parents who asked you, me to you go. Did this, yeah. God asked me to go. Jeez, she was like so spiritually sound, <laughs> so young. Wow. No, I started when I was like, yeah, you said you started two weeks you... before sixth grade. Mm -hmm. So I'd already been invested for a minute. Okay, so, so then I look at the class options and I was like, well, I guess I'll take art. Oh my <laughs> and I, I want to preface this by saying it's not that I didn't like art or do art all before then. But this was not in the plans. It just wasn't like I wasn't going to grow up and be an artist, a full-time oil Full painter. Full-blown, yeah. 
Like I loved my, I mean, in fifth grade, my friends and I loved coloring, coloring books. I still love Crayola with all my heart, but yeah. So, oh so when I signed up, um, the teacher had us keep an art journal. Oh my gosh. You're like, I, I was like, <laughs> I love journaling. So that just was like the perfect introduction for me, but I couldn't draw very well. So it was mostly collage. <laughs> Out of magazine. Be impressed. <laughs> I'll show you some of my favorite excerpts from high school. Maybe it's right. Yeah, this Jeez. one. That's like natural talent, it feels like. It's more than I can do. Are you kidding me right now? <laughs> I'll tell you what, most kids that go to art school have more talent than this. What's Just this one right here. Oh, that's at the front of the No, look at that. Oh. Look at that. <laughs> this is my people. My people. <laughs> okay. Be impressed. Orange is my favorite color still. <laughs> so anyways, um, so, so this was, this was my introduction to art. And then my, I told my mom, oh my gosh, I love this so much. I'm going to be an artist. Oh my gosh. <laughs> she was like, are you sure? So then did you do like an art school after that? Like, so yeah, so I got, I got a scholarship to BYU, Idaho. Mm -hmm. And freshman orientation, sitting in this big class. And I was at a tiny school, right? And something about being in a small pond is you have this confidence that maybe you could do things because lack of people yes. to compare yes. yourself to. So go to the university and like, oh, they, do, like everyone else. they do a PowerPoint of like previous student art. Hmm. And, you're really and I'm like, thinking oh. of this. <laughs> I mean, you still had a scholarship. You had to have had talent. I didn't it. have an art scholarship. Oh, it wasn't art. I had a, are you kidding me? <laughs> well, it's so much better than I could do. I was an academic was scholarship. Yeah. So I was like, oh my gosh, this is, I'm in the wrong building. I, I can't do any of that. So I left and was thinking I had to change my major. And I didn't know what I was going to do. Maybe write. I still love to write. And then I'm like crossing the street in Rexburg, Idaho and I'm feeling a thought, a phrase. It says, Jendi, you can be an artist. Mm -hmm. And I thought, have you seen my art? How could I possibly be an artist? And then God told me, I'm going to help you. I will direct your hand. And mm -hmm. I remember being like, well, you can do anything. So if you're going to, if this is going to be a partnership thing, like if this is going to be a collab, then like, let's go. Because I collab on collab. Yeah. So I just I, I I did have this stunning realization of how much time I needed to make up for. Because most people start when they're five and they're yes. like, I'm gonna be an artist. Oh yeah. yeah. And um so I go to school at four because that's when the building opened and I would be there all by myself in this classroom and because the janitors were cleaning it, so mm -hmm. I was open and and I would just say a prayer, like Okay, you told me I can do this. We all, we both know what I'm capable of. So we're going to need you to show up today if anything good's going to happen. But I'm like here to put in the work. Yes. And so, like, over the period of four years, just so many precious, I still like to paint at 4 a.m. It's still my favorite time. Because mm -hmm. I just feel like there's such a, like, it feels like heaven is like so yeah. close and yes. there's not a lot of distraction. Mm -hmm. It's so, so that's how I became an artist. So it was like everything in my life from like fitness to art, I, 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 I felt introduced to it by the Lord, you know, and, and I go back and I look at these paintings of me like in 2016 and, and it was long before I was painting American Ninja Warrior Athletes and mm -hmm. Strong Women and, and this big project that I'm working on. And I think, wow, there was like a foreshadowing, right? Like. Mm -hmm. And it's because it's because God knew where he was taking me, even though I couldn't see it. Yeah. It was like manifesting in your art, which is crazy. I, I know. And, well, and I wanted to look strong in this painting because the idea is his strength is mine. Meaning yes. like, like he, he will, he will strengthen you to carry the burdens that he places on your shoulders. Mm. And his strength is way bigger than mine. And so just to feel that power of like God is there and he's there for all of us. It was just like the coolest thing. Like we are his children mm -hmm. and he's there for us. Like in all the things that we're going through to support us and, and 
what we need to do is learn to tap into that strength yeah. and put in it's and it's not easy like i think i used to think that like i'm a child of god i am naturally spiritual right yeah no you like have to like it there's a thing it's on my my page it's spiritual grit is a thing yeah you have, they, to, you have yeah. to learn it yeah and in fact i i just did a little post on instagram last week about this but um one of the things that's come into my life because of ninja is acro yoga mm. this is like part i saw of, that where you're standing on his yeah, shoulders yeah yes yeah and i i had a week i was working on a painting and i was struggling and i'm working on this uh, a project that's much bigger than me and feeling overwhelmed and I, I felt like i was ricocheting the whole week between like fear and faith yeah and i was kind of feeling bad about it like God, we have been in this like a long time together, <laughs> like literally been in this devotional practice for almost 30 years. Yeah. And we've been through hell and back. And yet, why do I still waver in my faith sometimes? Why do I not trust you completely? Because I would have days where I'd fall for it. of the like, I can't do this. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm not capable, you know? And then the next day, I'd kind of reset, come back here to my studio at 4 a.m. to paint and just feel like peace. Mm. And I'd be like, why can't I stay here? Yeah. Why can't I just stay in peace and strength and support and we got this, you know? Yeah. And God reminded me of like when I go to the ninja gym and I'm standing on, I'm practicing standing on someone's shoulders. Right. So unsupported, just my feet are on his shoulders and he's standing and I'm standing. And, and, and when you're in that space, you think, I could... I could get seriously injured. Mm -hmm. I could fall. There's mm -hmm. no mat. I just hit the floor. I could break my arm. Mm -hmm. And then, then you go, but I'm just, your coach tells you, breathe. And you're like, all I have to do is breathe. All I have to do is stand. I can stand anywhere. I can stand. I can stand. That's literally all I have to do right now is stand. Just minor, minor fact that I'm on someone's shoulders, but all I have to do is stand. Yes. And so I find myself like mentally going back and forth between like, I'm going to die. You're fine. You know? Mm -hmm. And then I could see that same pattern in my life. Right. And then God just told me like, Jenity, guess what? You're learning. Like you're learning faith. Yeah. Like yeah. I put you into a space where you can't see me and you have to actually develop spiritual muscles. Yeah. And guess what? You can stand on my shoulders for a longer period of time than you could before. Mm -hmm. Yes, there's gonna be moments that you waver. Just come back to center and breathe and trust me, you know? You just, throughout your life, can find a spiritual metaphor anywhere you look. Like that is spiritual grit. <laughs> She's well, got the physical grit, the spiritual grit, the mental, the emotional, you've got, you've got them all covered. Well, I think that the symbolism comes from writing. Because when you're writing, it just kind of puts you in a space. Like I, I tell people, like, if you're just going through life, you're just always in the present. You're always just taking things as they come. You never have the, the big view. And I feel like if you just take, even if it's just like 10 minutes, dude, like take 10 minutes in your morning to just get a bigger shot, I feel like you train yourself to start seeing the similarities in different aspects of your life, like seeing the symbolism and... And honestly, and as you train yourself to hear God, because I feel like he does talk to all of us a little bit differently. Mm -hmm. I once heard um, a, a talk where a lady said that she, she kept a journal for a year, just all the different ways she felt like God had tried to talk to her that year. Mm -hmm. and, and, and from like advice from other people mm -hmm. to I was listening to this song to, you know, because there's all different ways that he's trying to get our attention. Right. But one of the things I think about having this daily devotional practice is that you're showing God that your, your ears are open. Right. It's and, the willingness. Yeah. And, the and if you're open, desire. then I feel like he's like, well, Jenny's listening. What's well, the floodgate? Let's, yeah. let's give her some, some insight, you know? So, I mean, I was literally, it's not like I had to, I wasn't even writing when I was thinking about the standing on the shoulders analogy. I was literally painting this painting mm -hmm. and then just the thoughts just come. And then I write them down and then they kind of get cemented in. So. Oh my God. I'm like overwhelmed with, with, I don't even know, with spirituality, with emotional, or emotional fortitude. You just, you've inspired me. Thanks. <laughs> and all these people that she's going to inspire that are, that are watching. She has been through a lot and accomplished so much. I just want to like take a tour of all these pictures. You're at Jenity Page on Instagram. Mm -hmm. And then what do, what's your website? Just JenityPage.com. P-A-I-G-E. So I'll put that in the description. And my first name, J-E-N-E-D-Y. Yeah, it only has one in. My mom was having a creative moment. 
You know, she just like, she's pulled that one out of the air. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She combined, like, she was thinking of the name, because it was the 80s, you know, she was thinking of the name Jennifer, and then her mom's best friend was Adine. And then she just kind of like. Blamed them both. Is your mom an artist? Yes. I mean, she doesn't oil paint or anything, but she loves to, like, be an artist in her home. Like, she likes to paint walls. Like, mm-hmm. not murals, just, like, color. But, um, and then as a kid, she did, like, a lot of craft shows. Like, she did toll mm-hmm. painting, remember, like, in the early 90s? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Those of you that have been around since the early 90s, she would do craft shows, and she'd, like, make ornaments and stuff. And so she'd do, like, acrylic yeah. little stuff. But Oh, my gosh. Well, I got to talk to her before, too, and she's no wonder you're so powerful. I know. She I just got it from her. Yeah. <laughs> she's the one that introduced me. Right? To, to, to the, the prayer journal oh, scripture? Yeah. yeah, I was going to say, yeah. your, your mom was that a was huge mom. influence in your mm-hmm. life. Thank you for sure. doing this with me. Oh my gosh. I'm feeling like inspired to go conquer the world after talking to her. Let's go! <laughs> and to go take some ninja classes. Yeah, and actually, as a little like plug, little plug I am working on a project that's going to be called the Strong Woman yes, Experience. I love this. It won't be until fall of 25, so just. It wants it's, to be it's gonna, there. It's going to be a minute. I am going to have a booth at FitCon this April. I think I'm the only artist to have ever – I should look it up, but I'm pretty sure I'm the only artist that's ever had a booth at FitCon where I'll have, like, some some of my prints of Strong Women, but also it will mainly just be, like, a sign-up to get your email to get information. Yeah. So when tickets are available, you can come to the event. But it will essentially be a conference where we discuss – what it is to be a strong woman mentally, yes. spiritually, physically. I mean, this is the epitome of gritty girls and gritty mamas. <laughs> yeah. Just a, two different ideas. And I've, I've painted all these incredibly strong women, and they're going to come and share their personal stories. But I don't want it to just be a conference where we all sit with our yeah, notepads. Yeah. So I want, that's why I'm calling it an experience because I'm going to host it most likely at the world's largest ninja gym. Oh, my gosh. Not that you have to ninja to come. It just will be available to you. Where is it? In Sandy. Which one? <laughs> it's called Impact. I live in Sandy. Yeah. <laughs> so it's the one, the base in the world. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So, but it will. They they have this huge space. So I'm planning on putting in like cold plunges, yoga classes. Like I, I wanted to be very experiential yeah. and like yeah. journaling, mental health, like cover like eating, nutrition. You know, like cover like the whole spectrum. Yeah. So. Please invite me. So follow me on yes. Instagram to get more updates on that. Fitness and my art became such a means of dealing with all the hard emotions. Adding paint and removing paint in my painting and over time becomes more refined. Same with my athletic practice. <laughs> this process of adding and removing skin, I over time become a more refined athlete. I also see this process in life. This process of giving and taking away uh, can refine us into a better person.